Running Away from the Hero. Remake. Wrath 61 Terra Leaders. EV7. Is your backside safe? 13? Who? After the Vice President Risen escaped, the Student Council were surprisingly quieter than I had expected them to be so I undertook an investigation, and the results were amusing to say the least. His bootlicking skills are pretty good. Like the metal bat beside me said, the Vice President Risen's ability to suck up to people was nothing short of exemplary. Using his shared experiences as a baseline, he used items that were essential to the other students as bait and made allies one by one. Moreover, he provided food and other daily necessities and appealed of himself as a necessity, and the results were successful. That's no fun. Owner? Didn't you say that this was to remind the students how important coming to school was? But fun? Fu tilde un tilde? They say even geniuses can't defeat people that enjoy something. That's their problem. Owners got nothing to do with thought? Lately this kid's been retorting back at me a fair bit. Did something happen that I wasn't aware of? Why is she caring so much for the students? That's cause. The students re obvs way to pitiful. That's why. This kid. Now what the heck is she saying? If you didn't go around hitting everyone, I could guarantee that the students would have absolutely no complaints left anymore whatsoever? You wit? That ain't right. Just why are the students risking everything to escape from school? The answer to a majority of them would be to avoid this kid's tashidashis. In that case, no more action for you from now on. Owner, owner said it right? It's youth, cuz it hurts. So these kids in the prime of their youths need me. What a clean stance change. If she'd been a tiny bit quicker she could even pass for a politician back in my previous world. Cuz it's meh. The textbook example of stance changing. And the unique thing is that said textbook example was all for the sake of hitting people. So owner, what you gonna do? You gonna tell TH, Vice Pres to stop, or penalize the other Stuco members on the rooftop? Now what kind of dreary suggestion is that? I'm not going to do anything? There's no way my owner would do that. Now just what kind of human does this thing take me for? Course that'd be an evil human more demonic than a demon, exactly like the evil god's apostle. What evil god's apostle? You say that carelessly and I'm going to get hauled off. Whying. The evil god's apostles denying the evil god. A-W-U-U. -U. Since she kept on harping on about the evil god's apostle I delivered a chop to her head and she bit her tongue. Perhaps even metal hurts when it bites its tongue. No. To begin with I'd have to research to see what part of the bat corresponds to the tongue anyway, but this amusing research topic would have to be put off till later. Since it's about time for them to get out on their own anyway, it shouldn't matter if there's a bit of assistance. About time to get out? I reckon that's probs a long way off. The person on the scene knows of the situation on the scene the best. The metal bat's opinion who was guiding, violating, the students on the site in person would probably be correct. And even in reality, they have still yet to break through Professor Muam on the first floor. But they'll escape all the faster because of that. Owner's words are always so full of bullshit I can't understand it. HMPH, this creature knows much too little about the organisms named students. HMPH, owner's being mean cuz I can't even go to TH, Academy cuz of you. It's unfair. A, you're not old enough to attend the Academy. Whying? All right. I nodded after I simply told her the simple truth of it. And for the record students, are creatures that study. That's obvious in it? Even I know that? Indeed, the duty of a student is to study. And for the record, if you tell someone that's crying to not cry, they want to cry even harder. Really? Judging by her tilted head, it seems she doesn't get it. In that case, let's give her a personal example. If Aris came begging to you to not hit her, and begging while crying as well, what would you do? Hawk, our absolutely delicious Aris begging in tears. You, Uni can't wait any longer. Hawk, it's, it's this feeling. Yes, it's that feeling. Actually I think it's a bit, no, a lot different but since she understands I'll let it slide for now. And the specifics of that kind of people, if you keep telling them to study, the less they actually want to do it. Even if they don't want to what can they do? 
owners locking them up and making them. Normally if they don't want to they run away, and the ones that run away you lock up and make them study. And if you lock them up, they run away again, and the one who is teaching them does their best to stop that. The endless Mobius strip, one, of education is the same in any world. So what's that got to do with the students escaping now? Simple logic. They want to go, yet we are holding them back. But in front of them is a giant wall. A giant wall that they cannot escape without climbing over, but is too big for them to. So they can't? But these kids are going to face an even greater ordeal very soon. Dat me? No, the start of the new semester. Whying? The metal bat's eyes widen to saucers. Yes, she wouldn't have thought of that. The reason the kids are running to leave school was to get away from her, but their first and foremost priority was to enjoy their holidays. But if the holidays were ending? If their normal academy life returned? Without ever having experienced the joys of the holidays. There's less than a month till the end of the holidays. And moreover since the student council have to prepare for the imperial festival, they need to mobilize during the holidays as well. P. Poor them. And so they need to try even harder to enjoy their holidays. Especially the first years, who couldn't possibly waste the first holidays of their lives like this. Number 15 Their Story Aris Ril Letia's Story Kua hi! As the daughter of a marquis. No a noble lady I shouldn't scream like this, and I knew it. But, sometimes there are situations where you just have to scream. What is it? Aris? Milady, did something happen? Did a devil appear? As I clutched my head in a stress-induced headache the other students began to gather, but it seemed they didn't know why I was like this. The reason I was despairing, was simply because I checked today's date. And the meaning of that was, there's, exactly one month left. Till the Imperial Festival? No, there's at least two months left till the Imperial Festival though? A month? What's there in a month? Yes, everyone else didn't get it. Yes, that was very well possible. Because it is simply unimaginable. Lady Aris, just what do we have a month left of? To my very pure classmate, I told them the shocking truth I had just come to terms with. We only have a month left of the holidays. Come again? For a moment, there was silence in the surroundings. Yes, indeed. We've never had a break, but there's only a month left of the holidays. Other people are all back home with their families and resting up, or going on adventures with friends. Or if not, just staying at their dorms to go sightseeing in the capital would be what you'd expect from a normal holiday life. But we've never enjoyed any of that despite the holidays coming to a close. Kyak! No! After a long silence, screams and shouts began to burst out from around the classroom. In an academy where the majority of the students are nobles, normally you'd never see this happen, but only in Eugrasia are these things frequent occurrences. It looks like you all get it. It just one month's time, we have to do the night study again. L. Lies? That can't be. Why is it that even though the holidays have started, I don't have any memories of the holidays. The only memory I have of the holidays are getting knocked out by the silver devil. The commotion that began with my scream didn't settle down until a teacher came in to begin the lesson. As I thought this, this is the only way. And the conclusion I came to. To find an answer to this ridiculous holiday life. What do we have to do to break through? Hmm. And you came to me to ask that question? The person that looked at me, Taken aback was a teacher of short stature. Asking Professor Muam, the final boss himself, was my direct approach. Yes. At my forthright words Professor Muam seemed to think for a bit before he sighed and said with a bitter smile. Become a swordsmaster. Is there no other way? Yes. My expression probably turned to something similar to Professor Muam's. Swordsmaster. The pinnacle of dreams known as the beginning and end of the sword that every swordsman dreamed of. If there were people who approached the wall of a swordsmaster at a young age, yet never broke through until they died, there are also people who broke through to become a swordsmaster in their old age. The realm that was said to be administered solely by the gods of war and magic. And I had to enter that realm purely to enjoy my holidays. Does that make any sense to you? Even the person acclaimed throughout the empire and throughout the continent, the daughter of the Aresta Marquisate, 
Sir Rhea, whom they called the Sword Princess couldn't become a swordsmaster at my age. And you're telling me to do that? No. Even if there are many humans overflowing with potential, the only ones that are that monstrous are the heroes. Professor Muams nodded and his reply was straight and direct. Indeed, but on the contrary it would be obvious, would it not Miss Aris? Excuse me? No. Even if I look like this I'm the strongest elementalist of the gnomes, the contractor of the spirit king of water whose appearances are all recorded in the history books, wouldn't it be weirder for students to be able to defeat me no matter how talented they are? Th. That's. When he put it like that, he was right. The opponent was the contractor of the spirit king of water, the most famous of the four elemental spirit kings. And I need to defeat him, and the other teachers in under 30 minutes. Professor Nicerwin had given us an impossible mission to begin with. At the very least you must be a swordsmaster to break the barrier of a spirit king, and if you were to take advantage of the gap that formed then you might find a way to escape, but that would be impossible as long as you lacked a swordsmaster, no? It would. After I heard the answer I stood blankly outside Professor Muam's office for a long time, until the bell went off for the next class when I hurriedly rushed back to the classroom. And the next break period. Isn't it impossible? I couldn't focus on studying, and after brooding on it I ended up coming to Professor Nicerwin to complain. But, don't you just have to become a swords master? The opponent was Professor Nicerwin. To me who was complaining about the impossible difficulty where it was impossible to defeat unless you were a swords master, he replied with an answer implying that it was our fault we didn't have a swords master. No. Do you seriously believe it's possible to become a swords master? I don't think it's impossible. Words just aren't getting through to him. No seriously, he's saying as if it was the most obvious thing. That's impossible. It's not like I'm asking you to become a grand swords master of legend or anything. What's so impossible about that? Moreover, Miss Aris, you're on the precipice of that very threshold. This man, although he knows nearly everything about summons, it seems he knows almost nothing about swordsmanship. Many, many swordsmen dedicate their entire lives to step over that threshold. Life is always an uncertain thing. You always miss what's right in front of you, after all. In that case, do you know how to become a swordsmaster, professor? At his statement that belittled the entirety of swordsmen, I said in a mild outburst of anger as a swordsman and not a student, but the professor's answer was completely unexpected. I know the theory. Ha! Huh? Now just what the hell did this human just say? Hmm. Could you please call over Professor Muam for a minute? At his all too deadpan words. I didn't believe for an instant that he was telling the truth, but my body was already moving to call over Professor Muam. What is it Professor Nicerwin? Miss Aris said that you were looking for me. I have something to tell Miss Aris, and I need your help for that. Hmm? Really? At Professor Nicerwin's words, Professor Muam nodded before doing what Professor Nicerwin instructed him to do. Is this all right? And what Professor Muam created shortly afterwards was pure white snow. As fresh snow you could only see in winter piled on top of Professor Nicerwin's desk, Professor Nicerwin rolled some up into a snowball and showed it to me, saying. Now, do you see this? Yes. The moment I nodded, he smiled and said as he threw the snowball in my face. Smack! Then, did it hurt? Teacher or no, is he looking for a fucking fight? Running away from the hero. Remake. Wrath 62 Terra Leaders. EV change in subtitle which means guess what? Time for the beginning of a new arc. 8. If you do it, it works. 1. Number 1 Their Story. Aris Ril Letia's story with a meaty smack, the snowball flew into my face and disintegrated, falling to the ground. What? Did you just do? It was not a question about him throwing snow in my face. The things that the human named Professor Nicerwin couldn't be understood more often than not, but they usually had a purpose behind them. And what I was asking about right now was the strangeness of my body. As the daughter of an elite martial family, I learned to fight with and among countless knights and swordsmen. And as a result I would never be hit by an ordinary snowball without even any mana imbued into it that cleanly. I simply used the flow of your blood to halt your body for a moment. 
and the one who gave me the answer was Professor Muam. Is that possible? Yes, when you think about it, blood is also a form of water. So why didn't you use it on us? It was a technique that could cause the enemy to freeze without any kind of warning whatsoever. And what if he had used that technique on us? Just when I had been brooding over that serious matter. Smack! Professor! The serious mood was shattered by another snowball flying into my face. I have said this before, but the teachers are holding back in their own way. The words of Professor Nicerwin who was rolling up the snow piled on his desk into a snowball were very heavy, but his actions were all too light and causal. In that case, what is the reason you are freezing me, and throwing snowballs at me? I said it, didn't I, Miss Aris? I know the theory at least. What does that have to do with? Smack! Again! Again! And if you could call the previous snowballs ones that ones that annoyed you but didn't hurt, now they were annoying and they hurt. Does it hurt? Are you absolutely freaking serious? I cannot stand for this any longer. Even if it is imperial law that students must respect their teachers even if they were commoners, this crossed the line. It hurts. Now I will not stand for this any longer. But before I could finish what I was going to say, Professor Nicerwin cut in and said. And that's the trick to it. Eh? Didn't the later ones hurt more than the previous ones? That is the difference between those who lie on the boundary of swords masters and the ones who have crossed them. Professor Nicerwin looked at my expression and sighed. Now, imagine this is the sword key that ordinary swordsmen use. He rolled around a small snowball on his desk until was about the size of his fist and placed in on one corner of his desk. And this is a swordsmaster's sword aura. He made another snowball, but this time he squashed it down as hard as he could and put it on the other side of the desk. Which of these two snowballs will hurt more? Well of course the one you squashed together. Smack. Correct. Hang on, there was no need to throw the snowball even as you're saying it was a correct answer, right? You woo! Although perhaps because Professor Muam didn't use his technique, thankfully I could dodge this time. Aren't you treating people too much like a toy? But you had to take a stand on things you needed to take a stand on. I did it because it was effective. There are times when Professor needs to consider the students before effectiveness. Hmm. I need to consider the students more. As Professor Nicerwin closed his eyes in thought, I was feeling proud of myself, but. Ah, excuse me, Miss Aris? Professor Muam had gotten closer to me with a serious expression on his face and revealed a shocking truth. You know, Professor Nicerwin, when the members of the student council began to play truant, he was the one who said this would be a big problem, and personally kidnapped and imprisoned the entirety of the student council over a single night. Huh? What did he say? If the students don't come to school, and stay at home all day they'll develop anthropophobia, one, and something along those lines, and immediately carried it out. In my opinion if he thinks of the students any more than he is currently it'll be a big problem, even in my eyes as a teacher. Although I have no idea why kidnapping, imprisonment is the first thing that comes to mind when dealing with students but I understood what Professor Muam was saying very well. That is, if Professor Nicerwin thinks of the students any more, then we're all in grave danger. Ah, ah, uh, excuse me, Professor Nicerwin? Hmm. Ah, this is bad. That human is thinking seriously. Any other teacher looking at their students like that while in deep thought would be seen as a kindly and wise teacher. Yet if Professor Nicerwin's the one making that expression, then that is the face of an archdevil wondering how to plunge the students into an even deeper pit of hell. Professor? I think I said something I shouldn't have. I mustn't have been quite right in the head when I said that to a teacher who cares for his students as much as you. I threw out as many compliments and words of praise I could think of but he isn't listening. If the difficulty of the academy spikes because of me then Marquis family or whatever, I could actually be lynched by the entire school. Miss Aris' words are indeed correct. It seems that I have been neglecting the students too much lately. Don't do that. Indeed. From now on, no matter what trials and tribulations there may be, for the sake of my students I will not fall back. No, you can fall back a bit. None of the students want Professor to be troubled. Not at all. Aris, 
You lunatic. What the hell are you doing by giving that madman motivation? Even the goddess started blaming me. The expression that Professor Nicerwin had on his face was as full passion for education, but equally as much of finding ways to screw us all over. No, there were numerous initiatives that I had thought about but neglected to implement due to the resistance it might face from parents. But I will have them implemented even if I have to convince the parents as well. Ah! No. I brought disaster upon us with my own mouth. No no, it's okay. There's no need for professor to work so hard for us students. Of course I must. As someone who has taken up the role of a teacher as a profession, I must sacrifice myself for my students. The students do not want your sacrifice. Was what I wanted to shout, but if I did I had the suspicion that I would create another incident. It's all right, professor, it's all right. I clutched onto Professor Nicerwin's legs as he began to rise and barely managed to stop him while begging in tears. With this I managed to keep the peace of the academy. Although you couldn't keep your own personal peace. I could only confirm the insane difficulty of the academy Eugrasia once again, I couldn't find our holidays. Sure, saying it's easy, to become a swordsmaster just by getting hit with a few snowballs. There's no way it can be that easy, right? As I looked on at the blue wall in front of me, I sighed. In around ten minutes' time, the silver devil will come down again, and the vicious cycle of getting knocked out and waking up in the evening would repeat once more. At least I have to try. I put some distance between myself and the wall, and focused all my mana into the spear's tip. My own spear style, designed purely to break through that wall, eliminating every other unnecessary movement. And focusing my mana there, I brought up that image again. I compressed my mana like Professor Nicerwin squashed the snowball. The image of Professor Nicerwin compressing the snowball was also accompanied by an image of him throwing the snowball in my face as soon as it was made, but ignoring that. Compress, and compress it again. Compress and comp, eh? Ha? Huh? Perhaps it was just me, but my mana was actually being compressed like the snowball. As my red mana became darker and darker, shining with the clear crimson light of sword aura. What the? Those words impulsively came out of me. It works? Did I really just become a swordsmaster just by getting hit with a snowball a couple of times? Seriously? I don't know. I still don't know whether this is all just a mirage or simply mana with a color similar to sword aura or whatever. It's worth a shot. Tuck. I kicked off the ground and charged. The basis of all magic spear arts lies in the charge. Even in the Ledia style spearmanship that brought forth the greatest charging force of a fully armed knight. This had all other unnecessary movements removed. All but the movements required to break through that wall of water. Ledia alternate style spear arts. Pierce. 2. The tip of my spear hit the water. The wall of water separated for a brief instant. Up to here was the same as normal. But if this truly is sword aura then. Explode. In the middle of the reforming wall, I squeezed out all my mana and twisted my spear. At the same time, magic power that seemed like sword aura burst out from it. It worked. At that moment, the wall of water began to shatter due to the destructive force of my magic. That meant? You. You mean you actually did it? Professor Muam's expression, jaw dropped wide open in surprise all but confirmed it. I went and actually, just by getting hit with a couple of snowballs, replaced the empire's, no, the continent's record as the youngest swordsmaster, and reached the peak of swordsmanship as a swordsmaster. But before that, everyone ruin. I shouted as hard as I could to the other students who were stunned, staring at the shattered wall of water. Nice, goddess Aris. From now on, every breakfast, lunch, dinner. We will make a statue of goddess Aris and pray to you every day. As I shouted, someone grabbed me around the waist as I collapsed as an aftereffect of using all my mana, and we broke through the front door on the first floor. And behind me, the students of Eugrasia began to run for the main gates. And so, we put an end to our long history of suffering. And finally marked the beginning of the holidays. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, shish, she actually broke it? Winning. At the metal bat's whine who was sobbing with a depressed face, unlike her normal acting, 
this time she really was crying, and I was left stunned. No seriously, does any of this make any sense? Of course it was impossible for Aris to become a swordsmaster. I simply gave her an approximate physical account based off what I heard from Sir Rhea back in the Imperial Court to get her off my back. If I recall, she'd said something along the lines of it was snowing on a winter's day and she was playing with her little sibling, and if she compressed her mana like a snowball then it would work? And so she compressed it and there you have it, sword aura complete. Sir Rhea's story of how she became a swordsmaster that was like the explanation like that old picture drawing Mr.'s, easy, right? 3. Actually went and caused an incident here of all places. You're telling me that this is actually the secret to becoming a swordsmaster. Owner, owner, what are we gonna do? Now all the student council have run away, and if Aris is going to break through everything from now on, then what do I have to live for? Amazingly, the metal bat didn't even bother to keep up her lisp as she asked me with a serious face. But, is this something to get all that serious about? What the heck is this thing saying? Just because she can't hit students anymore, she's got nothing to live for. Well, that's not something I need to care about. Heing. Don't be like that. Be like normal owner and use all of your evil plans to make an incredible plan that not even a swordsmaster can break through. A plan that not even a swordsmaster can break through. Wait. What? That's scary? A swordsmaster is considered an ultimate weapon in small nations? In the case of the sword star there's even stories about how she cleaved a thick steel castle door in two with just a single strike with her sword aura? I think it's weird to initiate a plan that an individual of that caliber can't break through in a school of all places. Don't be like that. Just how badly do you want to hit the students? Whying, I don't want to just hit the students. I just want to give them the motivation to learn. I think the students have already learned everything they can. N. Nio. It's an education plan that even created the Empire's youngest swordsmaster. Any further education is impossible. The Empire's already the continent's strongest nation. If it can mass produce swordsmasters, then it can even conquer the world. In that case, the princess will come after me, citing needs of national security won't she? Unfortunately, the Metal Bat's time attack education will have to end with its monstrous results. The final goal is victory anyways. As long as we have a Swordsmaster, our win is guaranteed. A God-class summoner, and a Swordsmaster. Running away from the hero. Remake. Wrath 63 Terra Leaders, EV8. If you do it, it works. 2. Number 2 Their Story. A certain teacher story. You woo Tilda I'm sleepy Tilda. I gave myself a good stretch as my body bounced along with the carriage's movements. It was the first time I'd gone back home in a long time but all I got was nagging. Really, even though I'm considered quite the problem child among the elves, I'm nothing compared to our princess. I heard that the princess had been looking for someone since long ago, but to think Professor Nicerwin knew where that person was. Thanks to that, the princess gave me an earful whether I'd found any information or not and shook me down by my lapels. And just before I got on the carriage to return to the academy, she told me to get that information no matter what. Not caring about how I went about doing it, she ordered me to get that intel even if I had to kidnap Professor Nicerwin for it and shook me by my lapels again. Because of that, my clothes that I only wore when I went out, my precious, precious robe's neckline was stretched out and that saddened me, but that sadness disappeared instantly when I saw the gold in the pouch the princess had slipped into my pocket as an appreciation fee. That's our princess for you. Her ability to handle people as a leader is pure art. After I tipped the driver thanks to my now generously full purse I dropped my bags off in my room and looked over my workplace that I had returned to. Em. Even though the school's technically on holiday, it doesn't seem like much had changed. Because in Eugrasia, students had to go to class even in the holidays. I, uh, I could honestly never have imagined it. Since elves didn't study in institutionalized academies like this, at first I thought that all humans studied like this. That there was a reason why humans could get stronger in such short periods of time after all. Was what I'd thought but as I saw other students on my way to the elven forest I realized that Eugrasia was a special case. To the point that when I asked those other students whether they had class during the holidays, 
their faces that looked like they just heard a hilarious joke still remained in my memory. The fact that their laughing faces briefly overlapped with the students of Eugrasia that were distraught and despairing was a secret that wasn't much of a secret. And as I was about to open the door to the academy. Oh, Professor Harrion. Have you returned? Um, why? Yes. The door suddenly opened first before I could open it myself. And the person who had opened the door was the student council president. Why was he out here at this time? Did Professor Nicerwen finally grow a conscience and let the students out without any strings attached? Or did a parent complain like Miss Aris's father had a while back? Miss Harrion, we're kind of in a hurry right now, so can we go first? Ah, um hum. At a mysterious pressure, I automatically nodded. And as I moved aside from the door a bit, shortly afterwards countless students started running out and made a beeline for the main gates. W.H. What the? They had hurried footsteps, but at the same time, their footsteps were spirited. What the heck? Why would I feel spirit from people running away? Was that possible? As I blankly stared at the students leaving the academy leaving as if nothing was wrong, I went inside. And what I saw was. L. Lil? Muang? I, I told you not to call me that. There was a corpse on the floor. No, since it was alive it wouldn't be right to call it a corpse, but Muam was spread eagled all over the floor as if he might as well have been a corpse. W.H. What happened? The strongest elementalist of the gnomes. I was taken aback at the sight of Muam collapsed on the ground. Very unlike the man who was the contractor of the spirit king of water but the man himself said as if nothing was wrong. What do you mean? What happened? I simply did my duty as expected of my line of work. His appearance as he stood up with groan, clutching his hip, did not fit his appearance that seemed younger than the students of this academy had he been human. Although it did match his actual age. Although he was younger than me he was still approaching his fifties, as I watched him stand up groaning, Ow my hips. No. But before that, my duty, as expected of my line of work, he did his job as he was expected to? Our duties didn't even match our job specifications as teachers to begin with, but never mind that, this man looked like he'd been completely and utterly thrashed? U.R.K. Yes. That's what it was. Muam's actions as he stretched complaining how his body was sore all over were simply far too natural. What happened with the students? The same daily routine as always. The students did their best to leave school, and we stopped them for the sake of learning. So what Lil, Muam saying, you got beaten by the students? Yes, and please stop calling me Lil, Muam. Didn't you go too easy on them no matter how pitiful they were? I asked sincerely as Lil, Muam grumbled. Even I thought that keeping students in the academy to study, aka to fight, was far too depressing. But all the new teachers in the academy were all here for something. And the person who had that something in his hands was Professor Nicerwin. And what Professor Nicerwin wanted from us was for the students to become able to break through our defense while we were holding nothing back. Refusing that meant it would be very difficult for each of the parties to get what they wanted. But perhaps because Muam was weak-hearted, he failed to achieve that. If he wasn't, the contractor of the Spirit King of Water, and the strongest summoner of an entire race would never be beaten by students. At least if Aris and the other god-class summoners became second years, or even third years and became experienced god-class summoners. Or unless a swordsmaster appeared out of nowhere or something, it was impossible to break through that water barrier. Not even the veteran soldiers professors Maroon and Aruin could break through Lil, Muam's wall. Well, I suppose thinking like that would be natural, wouldn't it? But Lil, Muam brushed off my seriousness much too casually. Wow seriously. An elf is worrying for you. You know. Your salary's going to get cut? Hmm. Well, come tomorrow. I suspect that you'll understand what I've said, Professor Harrion. Even though I spun it for him, Lil, Muam ignored me. And he went back to his office just like that. HMPH, what do I have to understand? As I grumbled and went into my office for the first time in a while, I started to prepare for the holiday lessons for tomorrow. And after I ate dinner, finished up some light chores, 
caught up on some important notices from Lil, Muam, who was on holiday starting tomorrow. Before the castle walls closed, as I waved to Lil, Muam who was leaving, he shouted. You'll really have to do your best tomorrow. HMPH, I'm not going to go easy on them. I need to do my best until I hear the information on the person that the princess wants from Professor Nicerwin after all. Because our princess is a great princess who makes sure to look after our wallets. And the next day, you weeing? Contractor, as I thought, this academy is insane. My contracted god, the god of the north wind, Boreas, said something I heartily agreed with. The sight in front of me. I understand that the students are charging to break through our defense. But the red aura surrounding Aris's sword at the front probably isn't sword key? Isn't it a bit too bright compared to before the holidays when she was just shy of a swordsmaster? And what happens if a person that's just short of becoming a swordsmaster steps forward to that peak? Isn't the step after, just before swordsmaster, just a swordsmaster? Aris, did you become a hero of legend or something? W. Wait a second, kids? Although I tried to attempt dialogue in my bewilderment. We've got 20 minutes left, but since we don't know what might happen, I'll make it quick. You wit. Wait, don't talk while swinging that thing. Let's talk, talk. The crimson sword aura shredded through Boreas's wall of wind. Way too simply and easily. Boreas, put some power into it. If we can't last as long as Muam, then that's an embarrassment. Ura, I do not wish to be a god that loses to some spirit king either. Although Boreas was going hard at it with the wind, the moment his wind touched Aris's sword it was all shredded instantly. And the other students were charging through those shredded gaps with extremely practiced motions. You wit! Lil! Muam! You should have told me that Aris had become a swordsmaster. Would ye mean just see for yourself? I cannot lose as soon as I read to Orn. We can't wait until the Silver Devil gets heary. Among his brothers that were all gods of wind, Boreas was the wildest and most violent of them all. As he started to commit his full power, a freezing blizzard appeared to obstruct Aris's path. Swordsmaster, yes that swordsmaster. A swordsmaster that not even our village has that many of and not even the princess has many of around her is in this academy. But I cannot lose. And three minutes later, thank you very much. The student that was at the very back bowed his head to me before frantically running outside for the main gates. Even though I was in the prime of my life as an elf, my body hurts all over. But anyways, how was I supposed to stop those students from now on? I just got back from vacation, right? When are the holidays going to end? And so, my short yet long holidays began. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, ooh you woo. My desk which could boast a lot of space even with countless documents piled on top of them was currently occupied with the metal bat that was lying sprawled on her belly, making a weird noise. Speak properly. You wa ah ooh you. She became worse after I bothered to say something. You've had enough fun so far. But style tilde. Perhaps it was because her head was pointed towards the floor. Her voice seemed like it would reach into the ground. If you keep doing that I'll roll you off. As if this worked, she turned her body around and made her head face the sky. And, you way ha ha hey a v a a u wo woo. That's still the same. Roll out. You wit, what are ya doing owner? I nearly fell off. In an instant, I grabbed her body and flipped her off the desk but she demonstrated her incredible reflexes that allowed her to beat up the students without missing a single one of them, by grabbing the edge of the desk to hold on. I told you I was going to roll you off? A weak goddess dats in a state of dejection's got a right to you waha hu ha -woo. I have no idea just what the right to you waha hu ha -woo is supposed to be a right for. I have the right to do my work at my desk. And this room is my room. Therefore, I have the right to deny your right to you waha hu ha -woo. Owner and I share one body. And therefore owner's room is my room. And therefore I have the right to ah -hoo ah -hoo ha 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 That's a different right to what you said before? It's alwite, cuz, it means the same as a groan of despair. At least you can talk. You wit. I have had to be good at talking at least. 
Cuz I'm now I'm a neat without any work. Looking at this thing going wah. And flailing around everywhere reminds me of an anime I saw back when I was young. At the time I saw that pink life form and had a sincere fear of having children. Well, it wasn't till later I realized that fear wasn't one I would ever have to worry about. Either way, to me who was trained under that pink life form, this level of a tantrum is nothing. At the very least you need to yell, you won. It's Dan asterisk s. Asterisk 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 buys. While yelling and screaming in that go doffle voice. One. Holy shit. Just thinking about it's pissing me off. Owner? Owner? I'm the one who's throwing a tantrum in front of ya right now. If ya think of some other weird kid and getting annoyed by yourself, then I honestly have no idea how I'm supposed to react. The metal bat grumbled and turned her head away slightly as if she was embarrassed to be throwing a tantrum by herself. It's your fault for only throwing a tantrum of that level. You wit. Any further tantrum and move face as a goddess doesn't stand. A goddess that throws a tantrum. I doubt there's any except for a certain goddess of water. 2. F. Some reason owners real well acquainted with those weird gods. This is the power of subculture. Oh thy who worries about thy fate as a neat. I shall share with you a way to escape from the neat. Ryoi? Ya yeah, serious? The world that the kids re all escaping freely's here, but I can really do something? Indeed. How? Hurry up and tell me. I need it now. I feel like I should hurry up and offer up a bowl of noodles with this uproar. It's simple. The student standards are too high so you can't give them punishment. A-N-N-D? Then it's simple. You just have to create an environment where they must be punished. Now that's a seaweative idea. Perhaps because it's the academy of a fantasy world, but Eugrasia has quite a high level of freedom. But inside there are things called rules, and they were all written in the student handbook they got on their first day of school, but what student ever reads those? It is a fact of my past life that internet terms and conditions are something you just click, I agree, and get on with. Even if the world is different people remain the same. And so, from today onwards, we're getting strict with the rules. So cool. Owners keeping the school's morals strict is so cool. Even though I know they're empty compliments, it still feels good. Apologies to the students, but to make my work easier, you kids will have to keep this child occupied. Running away from the hero. Remake. Wrath 64 Terra Leaders. EV8. If you do it, it works. 3. Number three, their story, a certain student story. Wham! A yawning second year student of Eugrasia dragged her feet from the dormitories. Thinking it was probably due to her partying with her friends from other academies until the crack of dawn, she headed to school nursing her weak but persistent hangover. Despite there being in a state of competition between the four academies, that was only really relevant within the Empire. Excluding Mercaria and a few commoner students, the majority of the students of the four academies had all met each other at social events at least once. Although there were cases of friendships being broken off due to fighting between academies, even so, the majority of the students also thought of life after school and tried to remain on good terms with each other. Especially since Eugrasia had taken a nosedive for the bazaar this year, the number of times she met with her friends from other schools had definitely diminished. But that was all a thing of the past. With the appearance of a whopping swordsmaster of all things, she and the others could finally leave school freely during the holidays. At this rate, they could all hope for even greater things after the holidays ended. Just how much did her mouth twitch when her friend from Arusha boasted of having sparred with the strongest swordsman in their school? A rising star touted to become the Empire's next swordsmaster? Our academy has an outright swordsmaster. How she wanted to shout that out at the top of her lungs, but wanting to keep that information until the imperial festival, she said nothing. And so after they talked all night long over a bit of wine. Perhaps due to the alcohol, even if it was weak, she was late. Well, even so, the students from other schools were probably in dreamland right now. Either that or they just gotten up. HNNG. I'm gonna be late. Although classes began at 9, they were expected to arrive by 8. 
Since she was going to be late no matter how hard she ran right now she decided to just take it easy. But this student didn't know. That from today, the state of the academy had changed. And the moment she came to realize it, she would curse her sluggish self of this moment. To be accurate, it was five minutes later. Ha! Huh? The front gates that were normally wide open were tightly shut, and only the small door that let the night watch teachers in and out was open. Despite seeing this, this student did not think anything was out of the ordinary. And the price for that came the moment she went in through the small door. You wit, it's a tardy kitty. You walk. At that moment, the student lost all strength in her legs and fell down hard on her butt. Because the one who was greeting her so enthusiastically was none other than the silver devil. Wah! What happens to be the problem? An overwhelming presence. A pressure that forced one to speak formally. That fear was so great that the students of Eugrasia would curse their teachers outside school, but they would never, ever say a word against the silver devil. And the one with that presence, the silver devil looked at the student that looked at her with eyes full of fear and smiled. Well, course that's Kazya Wu's late. A smile that booked a ticket for the express train to hell. Number 4 Their Story Aris Ril Letia's Story Gu Yu Wuk Sa. Saved. I heard screaming coming from behind my back. If I'd been just a hair later that would also have been my fate. The moment I realized that, rivulets of cold sweat ran down my back. Good job, me of the past. To be exact, me of ten minutes ago, that started to run to not be late. No wonder I had a bad feeling when it seemed I was going to be late this morning. What if, I'd felt that it would be alright to be a tiny bit late just like it had always been. Ah! What a pity! What a pity! How horrified had I been to see the silver devil muttering that, while watching the clock outside the door. Even then I hadn't realized what that pity had been. When eight o'clock came exactly one minute later and the main gate started to close, I realized the instant I saw the silver devil break out into a grin. If I'd been late, I would have been killed on the spot. Aris, from tomorrow, I'll do whatever it takes to wake you up. Yes, please wake me up. No matter what you do. You can descend into my body whenever you want. Normally the ones who say this are the people who have contracted with particularly strong high-ranked summons. And among them, it was something that those that had contracted the strongest summons of them all, the god-class summons, should never ever say. Allowing a being with a powerful will to enter your body and act as it wanted whenever it liked was very dangerous. But getting hit by that devil was even more dangerous. Although there's no danger to my life, that's dangerous to my sanity. Because every now and then when I got hit by that thing, I started to seriously wonder just how easy it would be if I could just die. And so, to avoid that silver devil I could hand over control of my body anytime. Kawooig! Let's head in. As the screams of pain echoed out once again I hurried my footsteps. But. Err. Again? When break was about to end, a familiar scream rang out from a corner of the corridor. Of course people can scream if they're in pain. But this scream that sounded like someone's soul was being dragged out of their body was only reserved for when one was hit by that devil. Meaning. Why is the devil moving on our break? Although I was fearful, my feet automatically moved themselves to the source of the screams. Knowledge is power. And to survive in Eugrasia where that devil lived, there was a need to know the standards the devil would hit us by. Guwaj, no one in in th, hallways. The devil wagged her finger at the first year student who was dribbling drool and tears everywhere. Did that mean that that student got beaten because he was running in the hallways? And so after a day, then two passed. As casualties grew by the day, a student in my class came running towards me with a notebook in her hand. M. Milady. Since we're all the same year students in the academy, just call me Aris. Lady Aris. It's this. A small notebook. Student handbook, was written on the cover, and Eugrasia's emblem was stamped on it. Student handbook? Yes, the student handbook we got during our enrollment ceremony. And. The section that she hurriedly showed me. That section was the school rules. All the victims of the Silver Devil were listed here, milady. What the? One page, then the next. 
the student handbook that I'd chucked away the moment I received it, that was probably lying around somewhere in my dorm. I stared at the contents named the school rules. Hmm. So it is. The people that were done in by the devil had all broken these rules. All right, let's go back and find my student handbook the moment I get home today. Thank goodness I kept my mouth shut against the silver devil's actions. If I had said something carelessly I might have been sanctioned as well for being a bad student and not adhering to the rules of the academy. It's not bad to just stick to the rules and live a chill life. Yes, keeping to the rules is very important. Because laws are there to be obeyed. Aris, you're brainwashing yourself right now. I don't have a choice in order to survive. Even if I deny reality nothing will change. So I need to change myself. Aris. Sob. The goddess is weeping. Am I really that pitiful? No, I am not pitiful. At the very least if I obey the school rules, I have no reason to be hit by that devil. Your self-brainwashing is way too natural now. And so, after searching my room I thankfully found my student handbook, and I flicked back and forth through the pages to see if there were any rules that might catch me out. Skirt length? There were rules around skirt lengths as well? Hang on, there's also rules around hair length as well? Ah, I've got short hair so I'm alright. I controlled everything I could so that I could not be blamed for anything. The person that feels delicious to hit, guaranteed by the silver devil herself, was none other than me. The moment I let my guard down I will get hit. I even became a swordsmaster in order to not get hit by that thing. I can't get hit now just because I didn't follow the school rules. Aris, now that you've become a swordsmaster, haven't you thought of taking a crack at that devil? But I'm screwed if I lose. That's my contractor. How wise. Even after I became a swordsmaster I still had zero thoughts about fighting the devil. No. On the contrary if I attacked she'd smile and say, swordsmasters are sturdier, right? And beat the crap out of me? I'd have to become something like a legendary grand swordsmaster to be ready to fight against that. And so after I did my best to follow all the rules. How could it be so perfect? Not even a well-disciplined army would be able to maintain such order. For some reason or another, Father looked at the scene with surprise. Father? You have a splendid teacher. As I looked at my father who had a look on his face that said he was truly satisfied, I wanted to scream that this was all the results of indiscriminate violence, but as I saw the silver devil beside Professor Nicerwin grin widely, I kept my mouth shut. And so, our parents' belief in Eugrasia's system and trust in Professor Nicerwin grew ever greater. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, now I never saw this coming. At Marquis Ledia's surprise visit I was a bit, no, very surprised but I gained better results than I could have hoped for. When I changed the school rules with the new timetable, I simply added in a few school rules I remembered from middle and high school. And as the metal bat went to punish the ones who didn't adhere to those rules, those rules that I just half-assed were kept absolutely perfectly. And Marquis Letia who saw the results of that returned to his territory very pleased with what he saw, and praise for Eugrasia would echo through high society once again. This is all the venerable me's power. Yes, you're the best. Hun, more, praise me more. Build an Arcadia statue in the middle, a, th, academy. If the students heard what she said they'd turn back and run even before they come into school. Eat up the magic stones. Hying, these taste bad. As if her desire to have fun outweighed her tears, she crunched on the magic stones I'd secretly snuck out from class. If you were to simply listen to her you'd think she was munching on beef cartilage, but they were actually just rocks filled with magic power. So of course they'd taste bad. You wit. Yeah feed me these disgusting rocks even though you know they taste bad. At least give me some sauce. Sauce for rocks? Want some butter and honey then? There was a time in the past where honey butter was trending. What would you call a rock with honey butter added to it? Honey butter stone? Wait a second, that actually sounds quite catchy. I feel like I actually could sell it right now. Though, that sounds like it might be a pretty sweet rock. Don't think it'll be all that tasty though. She's talking pretty well despite crunching away. If I keep chewing on it it kinda tastes like walnuts. 
So she's feeling the savory taste of walnuts while chewing on rocks. I said it feels like I'm chewing on walnuts. I never said it had the crisp taste of them. But that reminds me owner. Don't you have to prep for the Imperial Festival since the letters arrived and all? I do. The letter I got this morning was for the representatives of the four great academies to gather for a preparatory meeting. For you Grazia's representative I can just send the Stuko Presnerkia as the student's representative. Owner going as TH, teacher's rep? That's the problem. So I wanted to avoid going outside the academy as much as possible but... It'd be alright to trust the Stuko Pres, wouldn't it? What was my favorite phrase again? Cut in ya foot by ya trusted axe. But owner doesn't trust the Stuko Pres, don't ya? So it doesn't matter even if ya do get cut. Not even not getting cut, but doesn't matter if you get cut or not. Alright then, I'll trust him this time. And indeed our student council president Nerkia, responded very well to our faith. So cool. That's our Stuko Prez for ya. He went and declared victory over all the other academies. So awesome. My faith that my trusted axe would cut deep, deep into my foot. Running away from the hero. Remake. Wrath 65 Terra Leaders. EV8. If you do it, it works. 4. Number 5 Their Story. A Certain Judiciary Story. The history of the schools titled The Four Great Academies appearing at the Imperial Festival is a very old one. At the time they weren't even called the Four Great Academies. It was just that they were invited to the Imperial Festival simply because they were located close to the Imperial Capital. But perhaps it was because they consistently appeared on one of the greatest stages in the Empire? The Four Academies began to grow incredibly quickly, and later on they would be called the Empire's Four Great Academies. Thanks to that, it became regarded as the best place for commoners to try to turn their lives around, and for nobles, a chance to create connections, and that reputation remained true even today. Because of that, one of the empire's judges would participate in the academy's preparatory meeting as a symbolic gesture that all schools would engage in a clean and fair contest. But unlike the nice intentions, right now I was pretty much just a decoration. No. This time we need to increase the number of individual events to demonstrate individual skills. No, we need more team events that fit better with the spirit of teamwork within academies. Arukis, the academy called the greatest, and Marcy's that was hot on their tails. The two student council presidents from these two schools were arguing back and forth that their opinions were right. Even if they taught the usage of spears, maces and all sorts of various weapons, the weapon that the majority of students used in Arukis was the sword. And naturally their individual skills will be better, and are overwhelmingly superior in individual events where they were not surrounded by enemies. And with that specialty in mind, of course Arukis would be the beneficiary of an increased number of individual events. On the other hand, in Marcy's and Eugrasia's cases, they were the schools of magic and summoning respectively so they were better at team events. Because of this, every year there is a giant fight between Arukis who wants more individual events, and the other academies that wanted more team events. And since the teachers that were there for advice and supervision were of the same mind as the students, of course they wouldn't stop them. Because of that, we the judges have the bloody annoying task of mediating all this. Although Arukis was always slightly on the back foot due to majority opinion, the heated arguments between students that were all here to secure favorable conditions for themselves was always annoying to deal with. And once everything is over, we're always the ones to blame for everything. If it's the majority opinion, Arusha always complains that we always rule against them. And if we listen to Arusha then the other schools complain that the judge in attendance is biased in favor of Arukas. Since we get complaints no matter who we side with, there can't be anything more annoying than this. But at my senior's words that someone had to continue with this tradition someone had to be a sacrifice, and this year's sacrifice was me. Damn it, just next year and my name would be closer to the top of the list than the bottom and I wouldn't have had to do this shit. I just had to survive this year, why the hell did I get pulled up in my last year? As I whined about my life I looked at the two student council presidents that were staring daggers at each other. Hang on? 2. Does the representative of Eugrasia have no opinion to put forward? 
I realized that something was strange. Eugrasia, the academy that was called the weakest of the current four great academies. Thanks to that, I heard that their student council president was ordered to gain more advantageous games even more than the other schools. But even while Arusha and Marcy's was fighting, he was yawning as if to say he had nothing to do with all this. Hmm. Has he given up? Eugrasia's position in the Imperial Festival was perennially third. If we considered the fact that Mercaria, a school that had nothing to do with fighting was also included in those rankings that meant that Eugrasia was basically always last. And as if my predictions were on the mark, Eugrasia's student president yawned and nodded to me. It doesn't matter what kind of events are on. A complete declaration of surrender. Summoners were considered to be even weaker than magicians before they brought out their summons. And so Eugrasia's strategy so far was to aim for team events, and in particular the ones that went on for extended periods of time. Giving up on those was the same as giving up on the Imperial Festival. What? Nerkia. I heard that Eugrasia got an overhaul this year. Did nothing happen even after you guys changed things? As if I wasn't the only one thinking that, Arusha's student president said to Eugrasia's student president in a mocking tone. Looking at his expression, it was filled with expectations of having more events that were advantageous to Arusha this year. Really? Are you giving up just like that? In contrast, Marcy's student council president looked nervous. Marcy's and Eugrasia's combat methods were similar and so between the two of them they usually managed to earn more long duration, or team events. But right now Eugrasia had given up. Marcy's had already been losing the title of the strongest academy to Arusha by the skin of their teeth, but let alone closing the gap, it could grow even further at this rate. Unlike in previous years, this time there was an interesting situation this moment could decide the future of the four great academies, a turning point in history. And as I expected, this place was an important moment in the history of the four great academies. Although it wasn't Arusha or Marcy's at the center of it. And the voice that told us all of that was that of the indifferent Eugrasia student council president. Well, we're going to win either way, so what does it matter what events are on? Just decide on whatever you guys want to do. What? Did I just hear right? For a moment there, it felt like the entire room froze over. Even Mercaria's student council president, that up till now had been quietly watching everything unfold, stared at the Eugrasia student council president as if he couldn't believe what he was hearing. That was a natural reaction. A declaration of victory of all things. Not even Eugrasia at its peak had ever made a declaration like this. And moreover right now was the time considered Eugrasia's darkest age, and a declaration of victory at this time. Nerkia, as far as I know, I thought you weren't one to make empty boasts. Everyone nodded at the Arusha student council president's words. No matter what, right now Eugrasia was at its weakest. But the reason why that the other academies couldn't look down on Eugrasia despite this was because of their student council. From the president nicknamed the Elemental Army, the Trickster, the vice president named the Queen of the Skies. And even the others, the secretary, the treasurer were all people that couldn't simply be ignored, and even the people doing the grunt work were all named individuals, Eugrasia's student council was that strong. And the one who was judged to have superior situational awareness and leadership among them, the one rated even higher than the presidents of other schools, the Eugrasia student council president made such a declaration? Empty boast? I simply said the truth? But the expression on the face of the Eugrasia student council president was all too indifferent. As we stared at his face, which seemed to ask why were we asking such an obvious thing, it made us wonder if we had asked something that obvious as well. Do you believe that Eugrasia's victory makes any sense, Nerkia? The perennial loser's Eugrasia? Yep, so? His yawn screamed that he couldn't be bothered with all this. He'd propped his chin on the table and on a piece of paper he'd written, to think we'd waste our precious after-school time on this. What? Not even precious holidays, but precious after-school time? All of the Empire's academies were in the middle of the holidays right now? Are you overestimating you, Grazia, or are you underestimating us? Neither over or under. I'm just simply saying the truth as is. Do you want to say that's how much you, Grazia, has changed? You, Grazia, has changed. Well, 
If wanted to call it change then change would probably be right. But, here, we saw hell, more than anything you could ever have imagined. Hell? Yes, a hell that none of you will ever be able to imagine. We saw a hell so deep and treacherous, simply winning it is all but certain. All of a sudden the Eugrasia Student Council President started giggling as if he was enjoying it, and the Arusha Student Council President that had been standing up took a step backwards. That is not normal. As someone who has judged countless criminals in the empire, I can attest to that. The Eugrasia Student Council President was not crazy, but thoroughly insane. You a hoo hoo hoo, here, I really want to show you. The academy life filled with fun and exciting things that will go above and beyond anything you could ever have expected. Hey, oi, Nerkia? The Eugrasia Student Council President's expression was so bad I seriously began to think whether I should call for a mental health doctor at the nearby army hospital. When the Arusha Student Council President named Kier shook his head, as if he was regretful Nerkia turned to invite Marcy's Student Council President and as far as I saw, that man did not look like one that was in a fit state of mind. Al, all right I get it. I get it. Nerkia looked at the fearfully retreating Marcy's student council president and clicked his tongue as if he was truly regretful. Th, then you Grazia, Mercaria have no comment, Arusha proposes to add more individual events, and Marcy's proposes to add more team events. All of a sudden it felt like allowing the Eugrasia Student Council President to say anything more would result in a very bad ending. I thought that the Marcy's team would make an objection, but perhaps because of the Eugrasia Student Council President, surprisingly enough no objection came. Then, for the fine details of the events in question, including the current compulsory events. Although there was some objection from Marcy's, they were pretty much the same thing that Arusha normally said for similar reasons. When arguments that Marcy's had used up until now came from the mouth of the Aruka Student Council President almost word for word, the Marcy's Student Council President scowled and reluctantly took a step back. Then, do the Student Council Presidents of Eugrasia and Mercaria have no further opinions on the matter? Yes, yes, it doesn't matter. Marcy's Student Council President made a slightly regretful face at that answer but the Eugrasia Student Council President didn't care one whit for that. If one were to look at him scribbling let's go home already onto a piece of paper as if he was bored, it really seemed as if Eugrasia would be victorious at this year's Imperial Festival. Should I take a bet on it? When you looked at the odds for last year, if you excluded Mercaria that wasn't even included in the betting odds, the odds for Arusha was 1.2 times, 1.4 for Marcy's, and a whopping 4.2 times for Eugrasia. And legend had it that the people who were baited by those odds and bet Eugrasia were completely ruined. But for some reason, they seem oddly trustable this year. Because no academy had ever shown that kind of confidence in the history of the Imperial Festival. And as I pondered, the Eugrasia Student Council President said something even ballsier with an equally deadpan face. Nerkia, even so, wouldn't it be good to add in some events that's favored for Eugrasia in case things go south? Hmm? Our aim is total victory anyway, so who needs advantages? What? The Marcy Student Council President had said that to increase the number of team events even by one, but what came back in return was a declaration of total victory. Depending on the day, the events in the Imperial Festival had a different number of points of them which led to the possibility of a situation where a comeback was possible at any time. But there was one way to prevent the differences in points from ever mattering. Total victory. If you were to win in every single event, then no matter how wildly the points changed per event, you were sure to win. But that was very much a, what if, situation. There was no one who thought had ever thought that was possible. No matter how many powerful individuals you had, they only had one body. And since multiple events were held at the same time, the maximum number of events a single person could take part in a day was two. And even then that was only when the first event ended very quickly, that you could barely make it in time for the last event of the day. Moreover, no matter how strong you were, you could end up using all your strength in the first event and end up losing pathetically in the next one. And since the other academies could specifically send in counter matchups against that person, Mind games were essential. 
win the events that you absolutely had to win, and steal away the events your opponents had to. By calculating upon even more calculations, one had to choose your events to win and cut your losses wisely. That was how the academies had won in the imperial festivals thus far. But, total victory, no academy so far had ever managed to accomplish that feat. And, the one to do that would be you Grazia, the school judged to be the weakest? If I bet on that then odds of at least a hundred to one would be guaranteed. D, do you think that's possible? The Arusha Student Council President said in a shocked voice, but the Eugrasia Student Council President simply nodded his head. Yep. Everyone in the room was rendered speechless. Just where was that baseless confidence coming from? And that silence stretched on until the person who created the silence in the first place asked just when this meeting was going to be over. And so the meeting ended. Betting ticket Eugrasia total victory odds 128 to 1. In the end, I bought one of these. 